James Lutton, delighted to join once again. Kevin Ajago. Kevin, how are we doing, mate? Yeah, I'm not too bad, mate. Uh, a bit sore. Um, two tough sessions today, so yeah, bodies just get back in the camp, so bodies a bit sore. Fantastic. Um, let's let's before we get into camp and your new training team, um, let's go back to your last fight. <clears throat> just reflect on that. Um, tough opponent, durable opponent. Um, Lucas Makic, I probably pronounced that wrong, butchered it completely, but we'll go from there. Um, how was the fight in your opinion? Um, on the night, I wasn't really happy. I'm never happy. <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never happy because I, I, I know I've got so much more to give. Um, but I think once I watched it back, I was happy with my performance considering I had so much going on behind the scenes and to go out and put on for me, I felt like it was an easy ten round um, win. I think I'd, you could you can argue maybe he won a round or a round was a draw. Um, but yeah, it was a good performance, good tough ten rounds for me. Um, a good step up for me, learning fight. And listen, it's good blasting all these fighters away. But it was it was good to get the get the ten rounds in um, and get another good performance under my belt. Definitely. Um, like I say, getting rounds on the belt, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, I want to touch on something you mentioned there. Um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, I'm jumping to con- assumptions and I'm going to guess that it's to do with the change in training team. Um, potentially was the wheels were in motion at, a, at time during the fight. Um, what was going on behind the scenes at that time of fight? Yeah, just for the last kind of four or five weeks of camp, I had made the decision um, that I was going to leave Ibox and I Obviously, I didn't tell anybody. Um, I didn't tell my manager. I didn't tell, um, obviously, the coaches because then they would have kind of kicked up a fuss and, and stuff like that. I didn't have time to, to find a new coach. But, yeah, it was it was very mentally uh, challenging for me trying to get through a camp where I wasn't happy. And um, I was just going to the gym, um, kind of just getting through the sessions. I'm somebody that loves boxing and loves what I do. I love training. I'm always in the gym. And... Um, yeah, like I said, it was, it was very mentally challenging just to prepare for the probably the biggest fight in my, my career. Another another step up, um, uh, another title fight, a new weight, do you know what I mean? So as as much as lot, lots of things, everyone has stuff going on in their, in their personal life, but in terms of business and boxing, that was very challenging for me to kind of get through. Um, and like I, I wasn't sleeping fight week from the Monday to the Friday. I, I had 10 hours. Um, sleep do you know what I mean and I'm having to make weight having to do all the media obligations with Matt Trim and, um, and stuff like that and, and focus on the biggest fight in my, my career so it was it was very uh, challenging for me It sounds it absolutely I know you very well I've been down the gym down the eye box with you um, and it seems like it was all okay I've not, I've not been down there for a, a few months now um, with yourself what was it that changed for yourself? Um I just felt like I needed a change. I mean, it, it, it was nothing personal. Um, I have so much respect for Al, Eddie and Paul. Um, they're three very, very good coaches. Um, but I just felt like I needed a change. I felt like I seen slight dips in my performances. And maybe that was just because I was unhappy in the gym, unhappy in, in London. And um, ultimately, I just felt like I needed more one-to-one attention. Um, I felt like I had stopped learning. Uh, but that's I'm not going to take any way, anything away from Al and, and Ed and Paul because they did a great job with me. I learned so much for them. I've, like I said, I have a lot of respect for them and um, I was happy to leave things on, on good terms. But I think the big thing for me was I just I just wasn't happy. And if you're not happy, you're wasting your time. You only get one career and it's a very short career and um, I've got to do what's best for me. You see a lot of fighters get beat and that, that's their reasoning of, of leaving in a gym. Um for me, that wasn't the case. I just felt like I needed a new chapter. I needed to start a new chapter in my career and um, explore different options. You mentioned you wasn't happy there in London. So outside of the gym, just the surroundings. I know you only came over sort of two times, but what was it that you wasn't happy with outside of the gym? Yeah, I mean, listen, it would probably be 60, 70% of what was going on in, in the gym, but excuse me, um, coming over to London, living above a pub, uh, living above a pub, 
London's very busy, it's very expensive. And I just didn't enjoy it. I just wasn't happy. I just wasn't happy in London. And um like my dad lives there, I've got family and friends that live there and um I found myself as the camps were going on, the last three camps, I'd I'd found myself kind of isolating myself and not going and seeing anyone and um kind of I used to go around to our Ed's house every weekend when I only come over and I would go around and watch watch the boxing and um have a meal with them and I just felt like I'd I'd stopped doing that for whatever reason it was, maybe because I just didn't, I wasn't enjoying London and stuff like that. And yeah, just there's a lot of things that made me make my decision on the move um, without going too deep, deep into it. But uh, London, being being based in London was one of one of the factors. Obviously, you mentioned a new chapter. Um, you are now going to be based in Liverpool for your camps. Um, Joe McNally. Uh, just firstly, just coming off what we've just mentioned there, I want to play a bit of devil's advocate. Could you not be in the same situation in Liverpool, feel isolated? Obviously, you mentioned you've got your dad and friends in London. Um, it could be the complete opposite in Liverpool where you've essentially got no friends, no family. Could it be the same situation again? No. Um, Liverpool's just like Belfast. Um, the people are nice, friendly. They support their own. It's a fight in the city. Um, it's thirty minutes on a on a plane over to Belfast. Do you know what I mean? It's closer to home. If I want to uh, get the boat over, I can get the boat and bring, and bring my car. I've got family up in Manchester. I've got friends in Liverpool. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think that'll be a problem. Listen, I've I spent four and a half years in London. No matter how tough it gets, whether I don't like the place or, or not, um, if I just didn't like London, uh. If I just didn't like London, I, I still would have stayed there if I was enjoying everything that was going on in the gym. I know I've got to make these sacrifices. I could move away to America or, or wherever. I'm not necessarily going to like the place or like being away from home, but I've got to make them sacrifices to be successful and where I want to be in, this, in my career um, and, and achieve what I want to achieve. So I don't think Liverpool is going to be a problem at all. I've, I've, I've been here um, nearly a week and everyone's been so nice welcoming them and um, I've settled in well. Uh, yeah, so like I say, it's, that, that's not going to be an issue at all. As I mentioned, new coach will be Joe McNally. Um, you mentioned at the start of the call, you had two tough sessions today. Um, How has it been, first of all, with Joe? Um, learn. It's been a, an experience of learning. It's been unbelievable. We've we've gelled so quickly after two sessions. I, I, like I said, I've been here from Friday, but we only started Monday. Um and yeah, I've, I've, it's crazy. He, he understands me, and we just click like that. It's just he understands my style. He, he's he's a coach that thinks of five, six, seven different ways of winning, um, not just one. Uh, he's correcting me on the small, detailed things that I need corrected on. Um, I know what I'm doing wrong. I'm somebody that studies boxing. And I'm someone that's very, very critical of myself, and uh, just because I know I'm doing it wrong doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to pick up on it every single time I'm sparring or I'm fighting or I'm going to improve on it because it, that's hard to do. But when you've got a coach there that's drilling that into you every single day, you're dropping your left hand, watch your distance, stop offsetting to the left, it's just small detailed things. Um, then it's, it's muscle memory. You, I'm going to pick up on that and and then it's just going to, I'm going to come accustomed to it and, and that's where I'm going to make the improvements. But yeah, Joe, Joe's a great man. He I've, I, Before um, obviously coming up to Liverpool, I, I heard great things about him. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd asked about and um, I heard great things. But I'd seen uh, um, bits and pieces that it uh, that he like what he does on the pads and stuff. Obviously, through social media, with working with Liam and JJ and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I've, I've I've gelled very quickly with him. I'm I'm excited about this journey. Um, I believe that he is a man to take me to that next level. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm excited. And I can't wait to get started in terms of get stuck in the camp and if you look at the gym as well you've got JJ and, and Liam like I mentioned both my weights um, both at a higher level than me and I'm, I'm only going to learn off both of them do you know what I mean but it's, it'll be an unbelievable spawn with, uh, with them and it's not going to be wars that people expect do you know what I mean but because nobody gains from that but it will be valuable learning rounds for me You mentioned JJ Metcalf Liam Smith the first thing I thought when you told me it was Jack McNally was in terms of when he when he started coaching those two guys, their fights for me personally as a fan have been more exciting to watch. Uh, for example, Liam Smith Anthony Fowler fight was unbelievable. I was there 
atmosphere is unreal and he performed unbelievably. JJ Metcalf's last performance, again, very exciting to watch. With yourself, I already place you in that category of an exciting fighter to watch. Just how far can he take you and just how much better can you get under Joe McNally? Joe McNally will bring me to world level. I will, I will win a world title under Joe McNally. That, that's, a, that's a fact. Um, that was one of, the, one of the reasons why I joined the gym. I'd seen um, what he's done with Liam and, and JJ and I, I, I thought the same, that they've been more exciting and I thought they, they've both improved um, in certain aspects of their game and you take the, the JJ fight with uh, the Roger, I thought the game plan was perfect um, and that kind of made me make my decision. He, he's a coach that can make an impact on a, on, a, on a fighter and improve them so late on in their career where they're, they're probably accustomed to um, a coach that they've been with for a very long time in a certain style. So, yeah, um, I, I definitely think Joe will, will bring me to world level. There's, there's no doubt. Now, just finally, I want to ask you, how do you come to the decision on who you're going to join when you're traveling around different gyms, different coaches, different people, learning different styles? What is it for you that was that click moment? Um, the thing is, this is the first coach that I went to and it clicked straight away. And you can be a technically good coach, but if I can't click with you as a person, if you have a bit of an ego or which a lot of coaches do um, a bit of an ego and, and you're, you're going to be hard to work with. I don't care how much you can improve me as a fighter. It's not for me. I click with Joe on a personal level very, very quickly. Um, I can tell that he cares for his fighters. He's a genuine guy. What you see is what you get. He's not going to bullshit you. Um, and yeah, that, that, that made me make my decision before even training with him. I knew that, yeah, he's, he's a genuine guy. This this guy knows what he's talking about. Um, and yeah, you can see if he's, he's, a, he's a type of guy, you give him respect, he'll give you respect, you know what I mean? And uh, he's just a down-to-earth guy. And I, I really liked, I had a chat with him on the phone um, not that long ago before coming over. And I just I just could tell straight away that he's someone that I'm going to get on with. And um, even just being over here, in the, he, he's got me a, a place sort of to, to stay in while I'm in camp. And any, he's, anything I need, he's like, don't, don't hesitate to give me a shirt, you know what I mean? Just which which you would expect of people, but I know a lot of coaches wouldn't do that. Do you know what I mean? They wouldn't go out of the way to to make sure you're okay. And um and yeah, like I say, he's just he's just genuine and, and to top it off, he's a he's a great coach. You mentioned he's not got an ego. Now he's one fella that you don't see on social media, you don't see many interviews with him. Like you say, he, he sits there in the background, does his job and does his job well. Is that a, a big plus for you in your opinion? Yeah, definitely. One million percent. Um, and one of the first things he told me the first day we won the pod is, I'm not here to make you look good. Do you know what I mean? Any, any, anyone can stand in front of you on the pod and, and make you look good. I'm here to correct what you're doing wrong and, and improve you as a fighter. And that just shows that he's not he's not someone who cares about social media and and wants it to be about him. He's, a, he's somebody that's in the job to improve his fighters and get them to the, the top um, top level and, and make sure they're the that they're improving, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's a plus that he's, he's not got a match. Listen, everyone has egos, do you know what I mean? But he hasn't got a, any, a bad ego in a, in a bad way, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, Kevin, I wish you all the best under Jamie Ali's tutelage, and I'm sure I'll come out and see you very soon. Thanks very much.